In this video, I will show you how to factor by taking out the greatest common factor, or GCF. So the first step is to look and see, are there variables on every term? Uh, I see that the 10 has no variables on it, so that means that there will be no variable in the GCF. So now I'm just looking at the numbers, 30, 80, and 10. What are they all divisible by? So at a glance, I can tell they're all divisible by 10 because of the way they end in 0. So let's start with that. Um, maybe the GCF is 10. So once you decide what the GCF is going to be, then that's what you're going to divide by. Um, so if the GCF is 10, I'm going to put that out in the front. And then I will divide by that number and see what I get. So that's going to give me 3 v to the third power minus 8 v plus 1. Okay, now the key is look at the remaining uh, expression inside of the parentheses. Is there anything else that will divide evenly into all of the coefficients? Well, obviously not since we already have a 1 and uh, the only thing that's going to divide evenly into 1 is the number 1 itself. So 10 must have been the GCF, and this is the final answer. Now, it won't always be that easy, so stay with me. Okay, looking at problem number 2, the first thing I want to do is rewrite this in descending exponential order. So that means I want the negative 18 m to the third power first because it's the highest power. And then I'll put the 12m second, and I'll put the minus 12 last. So this is descending exponential order. Now, are there variables on every term? No, the last term has no variables. That means the GCF will not have any variables. Now, what's the biggest number that divides into all of these? Well, um, at a glance, I can see that they're all divisible by 6. So that might be the GCF. Now, I'm noticing that the uh, leading coefficient is negative. So I'm going to go ahead and include that negative sign in my common factor. So maybe the GCF will be negative 6. All right, let's go ahead and divide everything by negative 6 and see what happens. So if negative 6 is, in fact, the GCF, then I want to put that, that out in the front. Okay, and see what I get. Well, negative 18 divided by negative 6 is positive 3. So that would be 3m to the third power. 12 divided by negative 6 is negative 2, so negative 2m. And then negative 12 divided by negative 6 is positive 2. Now, is there any number that will divide evenly into all of these coefficients? No. So that means negative 6 was the GCF. And this is the final answer. All right. One of these times, uh, we're going to get to a problem where I pulled out the wrong number. And you'll see that there's still a common factor inside. And I'll show you how to keep going. OK, on number three, I need to rewrite these in descending exponential order. So I'm going to put the negative 54r to the eighth power first, because that's the highest power. <clears throat> then comes 45r to the seventh power. And last comes 63r to the sixth power. Now, do all of the terms have variables? Yes, they all have variables. That means my GCF is going to have a variable on it. Um, what's the smallest amount of variables that you see? Well, you see this uh, r to the sixth power. That's the smallest. <clears throat> that means. Um, r to the 6th power will be part of the GCF. So I'm definitely going to have r to the 6th power. So now I turn my attention to the number part. So I have 54, 45, and 63. What are they all divisible by? OK, I, I know that they are all divisible by 9. So I think I'm going to try that first. Um, now, the leading coefficient is negative, so I'm going to go ahead and do negative 9 uh, for my GCF. 
So that means I need to divide everything by the GCF. So I'm going to divide everything by negative 9 r to the 6th power. Okay, negative 9 r to the 6, negative 9 r to the 6. Um, well, 54 divided by 9 is 6. So that means negative 54 divided by negative 9 is still 6. So this will be 6 and then r to the, well, this is going to be r squared. Okay, when you divide um, r to the 8th power divided by r to the 6th power, one way to think of it is subtraction, all right? Uh, 8 minus 6 is 2, so this will be r squared. Um, look, what's really happening is this, though. I'm only going to do this one time. When you look at this fraction, r to the 8th power over r to the 6th power, r to the 8th power, this really means r times 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 r. That's eight r's. And then in the denominator, r to the 6th power, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So what's really happening is um, these 6 r's in the denominator are going to cancel out these 6 r's in the numerator. And then look what's left. There are 2 r's left in the numerator. So that's where the r squared is really coming from. Um, but as a shortcut, you can just do 8 minus 6 and, and get 2. Okay, but it's helpful to know what's really happening. In case you ever get confused, you can figure it out. Anyway, back to this. Um, 45 divided by negative 9 is going to be negative 5. r to the 7th power divided by r to the 6th power is just r. Okay, 63 divided by negative 9 is negative 7. And the r to the 6 powers cancel each other out. So now I check what's inside of the parentheses. Is there any number that will divide into all three of these evenly? No. Um, 5 and 7 are both prime numbers, so nothing's going to divide into them. That means I chose wisely, and uh, this is the final answer. Number four is already in descending exponential order, so I don't have to switch it around. I'm noticing that the 40 doesn't have any variables on it. That means there will be no variable on my common factor. 20, 30, 40, I notice that they are all divisible by 10. So maybe 10 will be my common factor. I'll check that more closely in a minute. Anyway, um, if 10 is the common factor, then I need to divide by it. All right, because that's what tells me what goes inside the parentheses. So this is going to be 2n to the third power plus 3n minus 4. Now I look to see, is there anything that will divide evenly into 2, 3, and 4? No. So that means this is the final answer. 10 was, in fact, the greatest common factor. Number five, are these in descending exponential order? Six, four, two, yep, that's the correct order, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, do, uh, does every term have variables in it? Yes, all of the terms have variables. Um, that means the GCF will have a variable in it. The smaller amount of variables is P squared. So that means that there will be a P squared in the GCF. So now all I have to worry about is the number part. Okay, 18, 36, 45. They are all divisible by 9. Um, by the way, this can be really tough if you don't know your multiplication facts. Some of you guys never learned, for example, that 45 is 9 times 5. So like, if you know your multiplication facts, then when you look at each one of these, when you look at 18, you're thinking, okay, that's 2 times 9, 3 times 6, um, 1 times 18. Okay, so when you look at 18, you're seeing um, 1 times 18, 2 times 9, 
3 times 6. You're seeing all of these numbers go into 18. And then when you look at 45, you're thinking, okay, obviously that could be 1 times 45. Um, you might even know that this could be 3 times 15. Um, but more importantly, <clears throat> the, more, the one that's your multiplication fact is 9 times 5. So all of these numbers pop into your head when you look at it, if you know your multiplication facts. And then you go, oh, this one has a 9 and this one has a 9. So that's a common factor. Now, if you don't know your multiplication facts and you always reach for a calculator when somebody says, um, what's uh, 45 divided by 5? If you reach for a calculator for that, then you're going to have a hard time with this concept. And I'm not really sure what to tell you. Uh, you. You really need to know your multiplication facts. Anyways, all of these are divisible by 9. So um, I'm going to bring this 9 out. Boom. So this is going to be my GCF probably. So I'm going to go ahead and divide everything by 9p squared. and see what happens. Okay, 18 divided by 9 is 2. p to the 6th divided by p squared is p to the 4th power. Remember, you subtract in this case. Um, 36 divided by 9 is 4, so this is going to be minus 4 p squared. Again, you subtract these. Okay, 45 divided by 9 is 5, and p squared cancels out. Now, is there any number that divides evenly into 2, 4, and 5? No, 2 and 5 are prime numbers, so this is the end of the road. Okay, these are in descending exponential order. I'm noticing that every term has a variable, so that means the GCF will have variables in it. I'm noticing that the smaller number of variables is n, so that means my GCF will have n in it. So now I just need to worry about the numerical part. Okay, 36, 20, and 20. So really just 36 and 20. What's the biggest number that divides e evenly into these? We'll start with the smaller number. Um, when I look at 20, I think to myself, um, other than 1 times 20, um, this is also going to be 2 times 10, and this is also 4 times 5. So all of these numbers divide evenly into 20. Now, when I look at 36, <coughs> Um, other than 1 times 36, I'm thinking to myself, well, this is going to be uh, 3 times 12 would be 36, but also 4 times 9 is 36. Um, I think 2 times 18 is also 36, um, but that last one might or might not have occurred to you. But well, you would have known this was an even number, so you would know it was going to be 2 times something. Um, anyway, let's look around and see what we have. Uh, what do these have in common? Okay, um, I see uh, a 4 and a 4. Okay, do you see anything bigger than that? Um, no, it looks like 4 is the greatest common factor. So. Let's go ahead and go with 4n. Well, actually, because the leading coefficient is negative, let's make that a negative 4n. Okay, if we, if we are wrong, if we chose wrong, then um, whatever we get inside of the parentheses, there should still be a common factor. So let's just try it out and see. We can always fix it later. It's sort of self-checking. So um, 36 divided by 4 is 9. Okay, so this is going to be 9n squared, because you subtract the 3 minus 1. And then this is going to be negative 5, all right, 20 divided by negative 4. 
negative 5n. Uh, these n's cancel each other out. And again, this will be negative 5. Now, is there anything that will divide evenly into 9 and 5? No. That means we chose right the first time, and this is the final answer. Number 7. We first ask ourselves, do all of the terms have variables? They do. The smallest amount is the m right here. So that tells me that m will be part of my GCF. So I'm definitely going to have m happening. Um, now, because there's just only a, a variable here, I would encourage you to put a 1 here in front of this uh, to remind you that there's a coefficient of 1. So when you take the m away, there will still be a 1 there. Now, to fig, uh, now look at the numbers, the coefficients, uh, 2, 2, and 1. Well, uh, 2 is a prime number, so there are no numbers um, that will divide into all three of these. So m is my only common factor. Um, well, you know what, except for this negative sign, because the leading coefficient is negative, we really need to include that in the GCF. So the GCF is negative m. So to figure out what to put inside of the parentheses, we will divide everything by negative m. Okay, so now what goes on the inside? Well, a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So this will be a positive 2, and this will be m to the second power. All right, 3 minus 1. Uh, and this will be negative 2 m, okay, and then this will be negative 1. The m's cancel out, but we still have the 1. And that's it. This should be the final answer for number 7. Looking at number 8, uh, do all of the terms have variables? No, the last term has no variables, so the GCF will have no variables in it. So now I'm just looking at the numbers. What's the biggest number that divides into all of these? Now again, if you don't know your multiplication facts, you're in trouble. So when I look at 90, among other things, I think uh, this is 9 times 10. Uh, when I look at 63, um, I'm thinking that this is 9 times 7. And when I look at 72, uh, it occurs to me that this is 9 times 8. Now, if you don't know your multiplication facts, um, when you look at 63, 9 times 7 doesn't pop into your head. When you look at 72, 9 times 8 doesn't pop into your head. Um, so that's going to make this process a lot more difficult for you. Now, the uh, I can see that they're all divisible by 9, so that's why I'm going to uh, use that as my GCF. Okay, so I'm definitely going to pull this 9 out, and then I'm going to divide everything by 9, and see if I was right. If I ever make a mistake, then there will still be uh, something that you can divide all the coefficients by afterwards. And if I ever run into that, I'll show you what to do. Um, anyway, if you divide all th of these by 9, that will be 10 um, n to the fourth power plus 7 n uh, and then plus 8. Now, 10, 7, and 8, is there anything else that I can divide all of these by? No. If there was, I would pull that out as well and multiply. But this is the final answer. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Go ahead and click here in the red apple to watch the next video. Click in the green apple to subscribe or click the yellow apple for the full playlist.